justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She's fair. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good, this one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket, and I'm not going to pay for it. Who says you're not going to pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What do you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. Nothing. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Kevin Cooper is suing his ex-wife, Gabriella Cooper, in the amount of $850. Mr. Cooper claims Ms. Cooper used drugs to intentionally make him sick, and he had to go to the hospital. Ms. Cooper claims she was only trying to rekindle her relationship with her ex-husband and was not trying to poison him. Thank you, Will, and you may be seated, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the matter of Kevin Cooper versus Gabriella Cooper. I understand that Ms. Cooper caused you some severe medical problems uh, after she fed you. Yes, she did, Your Honor. Okay, tell me about it. I have a smile on my face because I, it's like, whew, this is unbelievable, but go on. Yeah, good morning, Your Honor. I, I couldn't believe it myself. Uh, Gabrielle and I have been married, we're married for 20 years. Um, can I tell you a little bit about our relationship? Oh, if, if, it's, if it's going to shed some light on what happened, yeah. Oh, it definitely will. It will, Your Honor. All right. We were married for 20 years. We met in college. Um, we've been divorced now about two years. Um, Gabriella was a great person when I met her. You know, she was a little intimidating to me because she was very social, very outgoing, had lots of friends, was involved in a lot of groups, and, and she, uh, she always had people around her, a lot of friends. So it took me a little bit to, to uh, get the uh, had a wonderful friendship courage and a relationship up to and a 20 -year ask marriage her out for the first two time. Two beautiful children, I'm going to let you all talk to each other. since like you haven't talked to each other in a while, and you need to, you need, Thank you have you, something Judge. to say. Don't mind me. Just, you know, have a conversation with each other. When uh, did you lose interest? Just tell her the truth, Kevin, while we're I, here. I never lost interest. Because you abandoned me. I never lost interest. Okay, keep you. going. We have two children, be two beautiful children, um, Tristan, who is 18 now, and, and Abby, who is 20. And um, they're so both... So you guys divorced when the nest got empty? We w I... Exactly. He abandoned me, Judge. He Once abandoned me. Once the children became me. adults? 20 years. He left me. 20 year marriage, Your Honor. Okay, so what happened after the children became adults? She invited uh, me. I was dating somebody else at the time. She invited... Uh, the kids had an idea to have Christmas together. So at, I gave her the house, so she still lives in our family home. And, and uh, so we had Christmas dinner at her home with the kids. And uh, which was an amazing dinner. I mean, she created, a, created an amazing evening that night. The kids were happy. We had a lot of conversations. We reminisced about the past. Um, but during dinner, I became very sick. Really? Violently sick. What happened? Um, projectile vomiting, very nasty. I don't want to spare you the details, but it was coming out of both ends. As soon as shortly after you finished eating? During the meal, ma'am. Oh, wow. So what did you do? So I didn't think anything of it. I thought, I, I tried to think back at, you know, what I ate earlier in the day, and I just kind of, I couldn't figure out what made me sick. But uh, Gabriella took good, very good care of me. She, I actually spent the night there at the house. She gave me fluids, you know, made sure my needs were taken care of, and the next morning I felt better, and after a couple days later I was fine, and I went home. You stayed two more days? No, I stayed one evening, ma'am. Okay, then you went home? No funny business. It was, it was just... So she just nursed you back to she health? She took care of me, yes. All right. And then you left and went back to your place? Yes. So is he correct so far? Yes, ma'am. All right. You don't need to go chime in. You agree on that? Well, I just know that I took very good care of him. He should okay. just remember so that. So then what happened? So that evening before uh, dinner, I mean, she was still pretty distant that evening. I mean, the meal was great, but she still was kind of a little bit disconnected. My son asked me about my dating life and... Um, I mentioned to him that I had a new girlfriend, and she heard overheard that. You all had that discussion at the family table. Well, she for the holiday been, it, dinner. It was a year between the divorce and the dinner, so she she is living her life. I was living my life, and he asked a question in front of you know in within earshot of her. And all you had to say was, "Son, we won't talk about that now." Pro yeah. Hindsight, twenty twenty, I probably yeah. should have said that. Yeah, go on. But. Um, so after getting sick that evening, uh, about two weeks later, she invited me to dinner again. And uh, this time it was just going to be me and her. And we were going to just talk about the kids. And I was open to it because I do care about her from a, you know, she's the mother of my children. And I. You should. Want, and you want to keep a relationship. I do. 
And uh, so that dinner we had again at her home, and she cooked an amazing dinner again, except I got sick again during dinner, Your Honor. The same exact thing happened again. Not the same food. Different food, but the same vomiting and diarrhea. Okay, so this, now you're thinking. This time I knew something was up. I uh -huh. think it's So what did you do? Well, she admitted to food. it. What did you do? What happened? I, I told, I, I was telling him, it can't be my food. I think it's because he eats horrible food. And everything that I cook is natural, grass-fed, beef, organic, fresh. So and are I think you in his he, house when he's eating with this other woman? I know how Kevin eats. I was married to Kevin for 20 years. If I didn't cook well for him, he ate junk. Well, or how really do you know the other food. woman is not cooking well for him? I don't know anything about the other woman. My point exactly. So stop talking about how he's eating. I'm, he didn't get <laughs> sick from my food. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. No one is going to love and take care of him the way that I am. So you just wanted him, to, you wanted to be able to take care of him? I just wanted to show Kevin that I still loved and cared about him. By food poisoning? And later. Yes, I mean, a goat stuck its head through the bars of the enclosure and bit my dress and completely destroyed it. And while you were standing there, you didn't feel anything tugging on your clothing? We're back with the case of Kevin Cooper, who is suing his ex-wife, Gabriella Cooper, for intentional harm. Okay, she fed you the second time. You ended up with the same symptoms. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. You go to the hospital? I did, ma'am. You get a medical bill? I do. You have a diagnosis? I do. What is it? Here's to the bill and then also the evidence that they found laxative and a drug called Epicac in my system, which is a vomiting-inducing drug. And you went to the hospital the next day after that second dinner? That evening of the second dinner. All right. You didn't let a nurse you back to health this time, huh? Uh, no, ma'am. All right. And they had to give you a saline drip and the doctor uh, $850 after your insurance paid. Did you put anything in his food? Judge, I love my ex-husband. and I can't, don't act like you can't talk all of a sudden. Open your mouth. I just wanted Kevin to realize that how much I still really care about him and how much I, I, I can be. Th no one is going to love and take care of him the way that I am. So you just wanted him, to, you wanted to be able to take care of him. I just wanted to show Kevin that I still loved and cared about him. By p food poisoning? Well, I, By putting a laxative into his meal? By causing that type of vomiting and the diarrhea that could become so severe I that it could realize, take you out of here? I, I didn't want to hurt him. I didn't want to hurt him. How old are you? 40-something. <laughs> you old enough to know that that's not the way to get a man back. So you did put something in his food then. You admit that. But I didn't want him to get really sick and have to go to the hospital. You I wanted just, him to get sick enough that you had to take care of him. I just wanted to take care of him. Ooh, who, yeah, you're who sick. Does that, ma'am? You got a real issue. You have a real issue, Miss Cooper, and this is not the way to do it. No, no, no. You're going to end up killing this man or killing yourself. Now that you've done this and it didn't get him back, now the next move is you're going to do something to yourself to try to get the attention. And because he's the father's children, hopefully it'll, it'll pull him back over here to you and he'll have to be near you, around you, whatever. And you're going to use that. You need some help. You need to see a psychiatrist. You really do. You're not the only woman who's had an empty nest. You're not the only woman who's had a divorce. I've had one myself, and there are plenty of others. As a matter of fact, 69% of all marriages in America end in divorce. You let your husband be your life and your children, basically the children, because he was gone so much. You didn't make a life for yourself during the marriage. Now the children are gone, and they're making a life for themselves. You're, you're feeling lonely, nothing to do. Where do I go? What do I do? That's what you've got to figure out because you allowed yourself to live through them. I had things that I wanted to do. And okay, I... but you didn't do it, and it's not too late for you to do it. So I'm gonna order you to pay him the money, but more importantly, I'm gonna order you to go into psychiatric counseling for your sake, not for his, not for your children, for your sake, so you can survive. Your children want you to survive. Have a life for yourself. 
Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Judgment for the plaintiff. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $850. Gabriella, I'm really disappointed in you. You did not have to go to these measures to get close to me. Kevin, I'm going to take the judge's advice and get the help that I need and move on with my new life. Coming up. Yes, I mean, a goat stuck its head through the bars of the enclosure and bit my dress and completely destroyed it. And while you were standing there, you didn't feel anything tugging on your clothing? Network featuring dynamic judges and live legal programming. Well, we're not okay. at your school. We're in my courtroom. Unique court shows. Where is any information about the company? Live legal news. That's what you should have done. And a commitment to justice. Either you tried or you did it. The next generation of court programming in one dynamic network. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Missy Stewart is suing Carla Hewitt in the amount of $739. Miss Stewart claims a goat from Ms. Hewitt's petting zoo ruined her designer dress. Ms. Hewitt claims she's not financially responsible since it's common sense that goats like to chew on things. In the matter of Missy Stewart versus Carla Hewitt, you're suing her for damage to a designer dress that you said cost you $739 and you want her to pay it back. Tell me about it. Last week, my friends and I, we were getting brunch and uh, one of them mentioned that there was this pop-up petting zoo around the corner and I don't really like animals. I didn't want to go, but they were all really excited about it and so I said, sure, let's go. So you're out for brunch. Sunday, yes. Saturday, what? Sunday afternoon brunch? Um, yes, Sunday brunch. And now they want to go to the petting zoo? Yes. Had you been drinking? I had maybe a couple mimosas. Two beers, right? Mimosas. Or two martinis. Mimosas. Or two it's mimosas. Brunch. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But all of you had been drinking during brunch. I mean, yes, we we were not very intoxicated. I didn't but... say you were intoxicated. I asked a simple question. Okay. Were you drinking? Yes. Okay. Go on. Okay, so we went to the petting zoo, and all my friends went in, but I didn't want to. I stayed on the outside, and I was just standing around texting. Uh, there's this wooden enclosure. They all went in. I was outside. Next to the wooden enclosure? Yes. Okay. And the wooden enclosure contained all the animals, right? Yes. And what type of animals are we talking about? There were definitely goats there. Okay, so you know it was some goats. <laughs> and what happened to your dress? Uh, well, when they came out, we started leaving, and then all of a sudden my friend pointed to the back of my dress, and there was a giant hole in it. Oh. Yeah, and it was frayed at the bottom. It was damp. It was green and brown colored. I mean, you can see it was completely ruined. Well, that's been from the goat gnawing on it? <laughs> yes, I mean, a goat stuck its head through the bars of the enclosure and bit my dress and completely destroyed it. And while you were standing there, you didn't feel anything tugging on your clothing? It's a loose dress, you know? You were totally oblivious to what was going on around you. If I had noticed, of course I would have stepped away. Okay. So now you want her to pay for your dress? Yes, because I was on her property and it was destroyed by her goat. Coming up. Your Honor, I would not have been, or I didn't want to be around those animals. She and didn't tell you to come over there? Your attitude to animals probably didn't want to be around you either. We're back with the case of Missy Stewart, who is suing Carla Hewitt for property damage. Explain it to me, Miss Hewitt. Where was she? What was going on? Uh, well, Your Honor, I have um, been involved in this petting zoo for my whole life. It's a family-run business. Um, we rehabilitate uh, rescue animals, and then um, some of them we keep, some of them we send to different places. Um, Recently, in the last probably five years, we decided to start traveling. We have a, a home base in San Jose, and then in the summers to promote the zoo as well as uh, raise funds for um, rescues and local shelters, animal shelters in the area, we've started doing pop-up zoos, uh, pop-up bedding zoos in the areas, which is where um, she came to see us with okay, her friends. Okay, so explain the enclosure. Explain how it works. She said, I was not in, I was not in there. I was outside, but now she says inside the petting zoo there are different enclosures, so I don't understand. Yes, ma'am. So we um, will 
set up in a specific area, say a plot of land, and then we have smaller um, fenced-in enclosures for different varieties of animals. We rent an entire plot of space. Okay, where is the entry? Is there one entry? There's one main entry, yes, ma'am, with and a gate. And when you enter, do you have to pay a fee? Uh, with the pop-up zoos, it's on a donation-only basis. So no one had to pay a fee? No, ma'am. But there's only one entry? One main entrance, and then there are little fenced-in areas with different Where animals. Where the different animals are. I have let me, let me um, see. our enclosures. This is indicative of um, what are our, our very smaller enclosures okay. per so animal. So they're like... Uh, Little picket fences, like yes, ma'am. She was okay. on the corner. She was leaning against the uh, the fenced-in area. So you can see there's a bit of a gap between the smaller fence and then the white fence. So she was at the corner of the wooden fence. Yes, ma'am. Where the the two ends kind of meet. Do you have any type of warning signs up there? Yes, ma'am. Um, I believe I gave. I see you. something that's yes. here in writing, but I don't know if I can read it. So that is a warning sign that we have posted um, all over the pop-up zoos and at our home base in San Jose. This sign is telling them that, to, that you're not responsible for a, a lot of things, but one of them is nibbling on clothing and body parts. Yes, ma'am, and it's also a, a warning to enter the petting zoo at your own risk. Judge Maybelline's verdict when justice with Judge Maybelline returns. Uh, you're at a petting zoo. You can see the animals when you're looking inside here, right? You can see animals. Yes, Your Honor. Right now, it's just showing children. Uh, I don't see... Yeah, I see some animals. You see the animals, right? Yes. And you know there are animals in there. Yes, Your Honor. And you can see that that's just a little picket fence. Yes, Your Honor. You can see all these big holes right through here. Yes. So why would you lean there? <laughs> Your Honor, I... In that wonderful $739 designer dress. Your Honor, I would not have been, or I didn't want to be around those animals. She and didn't tell you to come over there. With your attitude, the animals probably didn't want to be around you either. <laughs> but you stood and put your body near this while you texted it. And while you ignored the fact that there were animals back there. You knew your dress was long enough and that your dress flowed so that the bottom of it, you said, because it was loose, could be easily pulled and knotted by one of these animals. Why would you stand there? There should be a strong separation between the people that want to be in the petting zoo and the people that don't should want to be. Should and shouldn't. If your life was everything that it should be or all of us thought that it should be, then we wouldn't be where we are. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. We don't deal with those. We deal with what is. And what is is that you put yourself in that position. Judgment for the defendant. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. Your goat destroyed my dress and you need to keep your filthy animals inside their enclosures. My goat was in its enclosure. You and your drunk friends need to be more aware of your surroundings.